everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. In this video, I want to examine the phrase, the power of God in great glory. And honestly, this has been on my mind ever since last conference, when um, Elder David A. Bednar talked about this in his talk, and uh, he said something kind of interesting about it. Okay, this comes from a scripture in the Book of Mormon. Okay, let me just read you what he said and what's stuck in my mind. Okay, the covenant people of the Lord. I invite you to consider the blessings promised to covenant-keeping disciples of Jesus Christ. So, blessings for covenant-keeping disciples of Christ. For example, Nephi beheld the Church of the Lamb of God, in the latter days, and its numbers were few. The saints of God were also upon the face of the earth, and their dominions were small. He also beheld the power of the Lamb of God, that it descended upon the saints of the Church of the Lamb, and upon the covenant people of the Lord, and they were armed with righteousness, and with the power of God in great glory. That comes from 1 Nephi 14, 14. And then he says, the phrase armed with righteousness and the power of God in great glory is not simply a nice idea or an example of beautiful scriptural language. Rather, these blessings are readily evident in the lives of, count of countless Latter-day disciples of the Lord. And then he goes through and he gives uh, these different examples um, uh, of what this uh, what this looks like essentially. So over here in First Nephi fourteen, I just wanted to read the chapter heading. It says, "An angel tells Nephi of the blessings and cursings to fall upon the Gentiles," and of course, this is talking about uh, the latter days, right? There are only two churches: the Church of the Lamb of God and the Church of the Devil. The saints of God in all nations are persecuted by the great and abominable church. And that's happening right now. That That is happening maybe more than it ever has to this point, I would say. Uh, it's happening to Christianity at large. Um, but it's definitely happening to all the things that we hold... Um, valuable and precious, um, you know, that our, our values are being attacked by the great and abominable church. Um, the great and spacious building. Uh, it's never been this bad, I don't think. Okay, and then after that it says, the Apostle John will write concerning the end of the world, and we know that that's referring to the book of Revelation. Okay, and then... Um, let me just read this again, verse 14. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, beheld the power of the Lamb of God, that it descended upon the saints of the church of the Lamb, and upon the covenant people of the Lord, who were scattered upon all the face of the earth. And they were armed with righteousness, and with the power of God, and great glory. And then after that, let's just read a little bit more. And it came to pass that I beheld the wrath of God was poured out upon the great and abominable church, insomuch that there were wars and rumors of wars among all the nations and kindreds of the earth. And there began to be wars and rumors of wars among all the nations which belonged to the mother of, the, of abominations. The angel spake unto me, saying, Behold, the wrath of God is upon the mother of harlots, and behold, thou seest all these things. And when the day cometh that the wrath of God is poured out upon the mother of harlots, which is the great and abom abominable church of all the earth, whose founder is the devil, then, at that day, the work of the Father shall commence in preparing the way for the fulfilling of his covenants, which he had made unto his people who are of the house of Israel. Okay, so we'll just, we'll, we'll end it there. After this, he sees John and, uh, you know, I guess this kind of leads into the book of Revelation, you know, if you were wanting to to see more. Because Nephi saw it, but it was for, uh, it was for John 
to write down. Okay, so this is definitely talking about our day. Um, it's talking about uh, essentially how to how to withstand the days that we're in, essentially, right? And then it it also has to deal with the downfall of the great and abominable church. So, um, so what I did. I wanted to see, I mean, was this just uh, Elder Bednar that was kind of like talking about this? Uh, and it turns out, no. Uh, let's go over to the phrase tracker. Okay, so the first time that this is said in conference, now this is not citations. This is where the, the phrase is actually in the conference talk. So it, that's the kind of search that I did. So in the 40s, it comes up once. It doesn't come up at all in the 50s. In the 60s, one time. In the 70s, one time. In the 80s, two times. In the 90s, one time. In the 2000s, uh, three times. So that that's a record right there. Uh, and then let's let's move on. In the 2010s, okay. Now this is coming up a lot more. We got uh, seven times, seven times in the 2010s. And then in the 20s, uh, it's already happened three times. So it's just within recent years, starting in 2013, that it shows up twice in a year. But you can, you can definitely see that there's been an uptick in um, quoting this scripture and putting it in the conference talk. Uh, so the, the first time I remember hearing this, like I said, was Elder Bednar's talk last conference, but it looks like D. Todd Christofferson has also said it. Um, uh, President Nelson himself, he said it. Elder Gong, um, Elder Cook, and he said it in a talk called Prepare to Meet God. So that's interesting. Um, Henry B. Eyring uh, in 2016. So it's just it, it's interesting. It's interesting. Uh, let me let me tell you some thoughts that I have about who has said it. Okay, I find it interesting that both Elder Bednar and Elder Gong have said it because I I don't know if those two are kind of like. Uh, in some kind of way coupled together because it was both of them that introduced the pamphlet on uh, our church understanding Islam and Islam understanding our church. Uh, they rolled that out together, right? Um, well, I, maybe that's the only time I've seen them together. I'm not sure. But anyway, that just kind of stands out. It's interesting that uh, at the time, Elder Iring, who would become later President Iring, he said it. And then... Um, yeah, and then I've noticed also, okay, after doing all these searches, D. Todd Christofferson, he's actually talked quite a bit about the Second Coming. His name comes up a lot as I as I come, uh, look up all these different phrases. So I, I feel like D. Todd Christofferson is a big uh, Second Coming guy. And we've talked about the fact that uh, the D in his name is for David, right? Now, I've talked about how I, I can't find anything, any such thing as a two Davids prophecy where the two witnesses in Jerusalem in the last days are going to be named David, as has been suggested in other places in YouTube. Uh, there is a two Davids prophecy, but it's referring to the first original David and then how there's going to be a latter day David who is king of Israel. Um, but regardless, uh, uh, names are important. I think it's really interesting that both of their names are David. I, I did a whole video, actually, about the name David. And uh, it's interesting because we've pretty much, throughout the entire history of uh, the church, uh, since the Restoration, there has always been an apostle named David, except for, I can't remember if they were like a couple years. You'd have to go and watch that video. Um, I think I called it the two Davids. So you can go look that up. But uh, it talks about that. 
at length, and there's some pretty interesting things. So anyway, uh, what I want to do now, I just want to just briefly look and see what some of the, some of these people had to say um, as they were quoting this scripture. Okay, so let's first start with D. Todd Christofferson's talk. Let's see what he says. Let us heed the prophet's call to stay on the covenant path. Okay, uh, this whole thing, the the covenant path. I feel like that's been a more recent kind of a phrase that's been used lately in the church. Um, okay, Nephi saw us in our time and recorded. Uh, okay, and then he just he quotes the scripture itself. Okay, so that's what he said. He's talking about uh, our day, the importance of staying on the covenant path. Okay. Uh, let's see what President Nelson said. We live in the day that our forefathers have awaited with in, with anxious expectation. We have a front row. We have front row seats to witness live what the prophet Nephi only saw in vision: that the power of the Lamb of God would descend upon the covenant people of the Lord, who were scattered upon all the face of the earth, and they were armed with righteousness and with the power of God. In great glory. See, so it's interesting because uh, by by being righteous and and therefore keeping covenants and staying on the covenant path, that gives us power uh, and also protection. So it makes sense that as we get deeper and deeper into this um, period of time, as we're approaching the second coming. Uh, it makes sense that they would be referencing this scripture. Um, and again, it's interesting how how this scripture is uh, tied to the wrath of God being poured out upon the great and abominable church. Uh, could this also be kind of a way of telling us that that's the point in time that we're at? We're going to start seeing... Uh, well, I think we already have been seeing a lot of wrath in nature and other things, but... Um, you know, there's probably going to be more. Okay, let's see what Elder Gong said in his. As, as Lamb of God, our Savior knows when we feel alone, diminished, uncertain, or afraid. In vision, Nephi saw the power of God descend upon the saints of the Church of the Lamb and upon the covenant people. See, covenant people of the Lord. Though, uh, though scattered upon all the face of the earth, they were armed with righteousness and with the power of God and great glory. Uh, the promise of hope and comfort includes our day. Are you the only member of the church in your family, school, workplace, or community? Does your brand sound... Okay, no. All right. Let's see what Elder Cook said. Okay. And this is the... This is the talk titled "Prepare to Meet God." That's a really that is a really amazing title. I like it. Where do we stand today in fulfilling these divinely appointed responsibilities? First, with respect to Moses's restoration of the keys of the, for the gathering of Israel. Today, almost seventy thousand missionaries are spread across the earth, preaching his gospel to gather his elect. This is the commencement, commencement of the fulfillment of the great and marvelous work Nephi foresaw among both the Gentiles and the house of Israel. Nephi saw our time when the saints of God would be upon all the face of the earth, but their numbers, numbers would be small because of wickedness. However, he foresaw that they would be armed with righteousness and with the power of God in great glory. When viewed across the brief history of the restored church, the missionary effort has been most remarkable. We are seeing the fulfillment of, of Nephi's vision. Though our numbers are relatively few, uh, we will continue our effort and outreach to those who will, who will respond to the Savior's message. And uh, just an interesting side note, when when I was at the, at the Madrid MTC, President Hinckley came through. He was doing a European tour. And uh, D. Todd Christofferson was there, but at the time, I think he was only a 70. And then, uh, at the time, Elder Nelson was there as well. And I specifically remember this. He, he said to us, 
uh, just the, you know, maybe 20 some odd missionaries um, that he was talking to, that he didn't think that the church would get very large. Um, and, and that kind of like uh, stuck with me, you know, ever since that time, I was like, wow, you know, because you just think about how many people there are on the earth you know, right now we're at like 7 billion. And, uh, you know, we don't know what's going to happen, obviously, as far as people on the other side of the veil. We know that there are people on the other side of the veil that accept the gospel. As far as the numbers go, uh, I don't think, I mean, I don't think we're really going to know until after this life or maybe in the millennium. It's going to be interesting when, when everything is said and done, how many will have, um, entered onto the, you know, entered through the gate and onto the covenant path uh, and achieved exaltation after this life. I'm, I'm going to be really interested to see how that goes. I know it's been said that this earth is like an especially wicked um, world because we, we crucified the Savior. Um, and there, there's other worlds that would not have done that. I, I just, I'm very curious. I'm a curious person. I'd like to see the breakdown, us compared to other worlds, and just like how many end up uh, among all of God's creations. Are, like, are all worlds kind of the same as far as like the the numbers go? Or is our world like just really, really, really bad? And um, that's why we see so few that are righteous. I it's just the thoughts that I have. Uh, put your thoughts down in the comments below. Um, okay, and, and then lastly, let's take a look and see what um, President Eyring said, said back when he was Elder Eyring. Um, what I could okay, what I could not see clearly then was that the Lord was pouring out His Spirit on people in those little sacrament meetings. I, I could feel it, but I could not see the extent and the timing of the Lord's intentions to build and glorify his kingdom. A prophet by revelation saw and recorded <clears throat> what we can now see ourselves. Nephi said that our total numbers would not be great, but that the cumulative, cumulative light uh, would be a sight to see. And then he reads the scripture and then after that, he says, in this dispensation, a similar prophetic description of our condition and the opportunities ahead is recorded in the Doctrine and Covenants. Okay, let's see what that says. Ye have, ye have not as yet understood how great blessings the Father hath in his own hands and prepared for you. And ye cannot bear all things now. Nevertheless, be of good, good cheer, for I will lead you along. The kingdom is yours, and the blessing thereof are yours, and the riches of eternity are yours. And he who, hath, who receiveth all things with thankfulness shall be made glorious, and the things of this earth shall be added unto him, even an hundredfold, yea, more. Okay. That's that's interesting. That is interesting. Okay, well, so that's that. Okay, I think it's interesting. I'm gonna I'm gonna be interested to see if this scripture and um, you know if if it's referenced more in future general conference talks and if it's put into future general conference talks. So. Um, I think that this is a this is a key concept right now for us, and I feel like this tracker kind of, um, you know, highlights that fact. You look at these past decades, it just it doesn't really come up. It doesn't really come up, but look at the last few years. I think now is the time that that scripture really, really applies to. Of course, you know, it applies to the, probably to the whole dispensation, but, but in reality, <laughs> in reality, um, I feel like now really is the time when it's happening. We're, we're definitely seeing a lot of wrath of God. We're seeing it in volcanoes, earthquakes, hurricanes, floods. Uh, did I say tornadoes already? Um, we're seeing crazy space weather. We're seeing wars. Uh, 
you know, we, we have the coronavirus and, you know, even though it's not, okay, I'm not going to get into it. Like there's always going to be comments like it's not that bad, but well, it, it's killed people. It, it has in fact killed people. And, um, and, it, and it's definitely impacted the way the world works. You know, it, there hasn't been really an event like this before. So uh, we're, we're just seeing all sorts of really crazy things. And um, yeah, we, we need to be right now armed with righteousness and with the power of God in, in great glory. And yeah. Uh, and prepare to meet God. I think that, I really think that's what we need to do. Uh, I think that time is getting really, really close. Okay, so that's it for this one. Uh, again, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it. Uh, make sure to share it, and I'll talk to you guys later.